Hello, friends. Welcome back to Market Shares. I'm your host, Tony Blodgett, and my co-host and guest today is someone who needs no introduction if you watch this show on any regular basis. I have my monthly installment of Real Estate with Anton Stetner. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the uh, Welcome back to the podcast. So, look, I, I just think that it's really relevant time to have Anton back in, talk about what's going on in the market. We really need to keep a close, I think, uh, finger on the pulse of what's happening with real estate because, you know, we and we were just talking before the camera started rolling, you know, interest rates and what's going on in the market are so intertwined together. And I've given a little bit of commentary over the past few weeks of, you know, we may have this window of time here where rates hit their lowest point on December 27th. They've slowly gotten worse since then. Not not bad. I mean, we're still better than we were, but they've definitely kind of crept back up. We're going to talk a little bit about what's led to that. Uh, I'm going to see if Anton agrees with me that this creates this, this opportunity. And is he seeing that in the stats and the numbers, uh, at least here locally? Anton's a expert at... Uh, you know, real estate in general, but really um, zeroed in on Snohomish County, what's going on in Washington State. But look, the reality is, is we know that it's just a microcosm for what's going on around the country. So I think this will be relevant to all of our watchers. But with that being said, with that intro, Anton, welcome. Um, and thanks for making the time. Oh, thanks for having me again. What What I think we should start with is what do you think you know, when Jerome Powell went on 60 Minutes, you know, the Fed chairman goes out there, what was the message or how did you feel about that when you when you saw him? Yeah. So, I mean, I talked a little bit about this that, you know, last week went right after it happened. And, you know, what I first of all, we know that that interview was right after he had done the 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 public uh, announcement regarding the fact that they weren't going to be raising or cutting rates. They were leaving monetary policy unchanged. He um you know, I, I was happy about his his messaging with that and, and, and the Q&A that was afterwards. It wasn't quite as dovish as the previous meeting yeah, yeah. Uh, where I think you and I called each other like, while well, it's happening. We're like, this is amazing. It's like, you know, Christmas is early. Um, we were really excited. But, you know, I was concerned he was going to try to walk that back like in a hard way. And he didn't, you know. So um, I think he stayed very even keeled. I, I, I think that he basically all but said, you know, a, a rate cut in March is off the table. Uh, we put an exclamation point in that uh, when the CPI report oh, came yes. out. So yeah, we'll, we'll, talk of, we'll talk about that. But um, but uh, but no, I, I felt good about his message. I think that he stayed stayed true. He definitely said, we're, you know, we're still going to cut. Uh, I, I think that people are now thinking it's more, you know, he's serious. It might only be the three times, four times. Um, I, I still personally think it's going to be more than that. And and the reason I think that, Anton, is because historically speaking, they don't just do three rate cuts. I mean, usually once they start, it's pretty aggressive if yeah. you look historically. Um, but no, I, I liked his message. To me, the simple fact that the chairman of the Federal Reserve is on 60 Minutes yes. is very telling to you about how tuned in everybody is into inflation and interest rates. It's like it's prime time, right? Bingo. Which is interesting in and of itself. And this is probably like one of those first times in history where you have people genuinely paying that much attention to the Fed, to interest rates, but it's also made them kind of oversensitive. Yeah. And so I think the market is now showing signs of over responding to interest rates. So, you know, we got the CPI report. Yeah, talk about oversensitivity, right? Bingo. And so the CPI report came in hot. And all of a sudden, if you, you know, I like to look at the 10 year on uh, uh, MSNBC. That's just the one I always look at. And on the uh, February 13th, you can see literally the announcement come out and it just go vertical and jump. Yeah. Right there. Because everyone is so tuned in that I think we're we're overreacting to the market. So there's two ways you got to look at this is one consumers may be overreacting to news and that investors are overreacting to news. But then secondly, us as mortgage brokers, as real estate agents, as real estate investors, we actually have to be thinking a little bit more long-term and look and stepping back for a second, because what I'm seeing is I'm seeing our, uh, our agents, our brokers, our friends kind of get a little too wound up. Yeah with this daily movement when it's like, well, we've, we've already peaked. 
They said they're coming down. We're moving in the right direction. The real estate market has not crashed. The economy has not crashed. And there's signs, and we'll get into this more, that the market, I mean, it's genuinely heating up right in front of us right now. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think, first of all, when we say CPI was a huge miss, we're talking like one-tenth, you know. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it's huge, relatively speaking. It was supposed to be 3.1. It was supposed to be at 3, I think. 3.29, yeah. Yeah, it came in at 3.1. Yeah. So, you know, we're not talking hu huge numbers for those of you that don't watch CPI very closely. But, yeah, definitely missed the mark. Um, now, keep in mind, there is a huge component of CPI that is tied to shelter cost. Uh, it, it's weighted uh, well over 40%. I don't remember the number off the top of my head, but it, 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 there's a heavy weighting on, uh, on shelter. And also keep in mind, you guys, CPI is not the Fed's favorite measure of inflation. And we had a reminder of that here this week. Talk about what happened, Anton, um, this, this, this week where we had other fair, uh, you know, voting Fed members coming out and saying. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what I mean. So the market clearly overreacted, and that was actually too much tightening probably for the Fed. So then the Fed, they used their other tool, the mouthpiece. Two Fed people came out and said basically the same message, just in different ways. And they said, hey, we're more concerned about the long-term trend. Their long-term trend is moving in the right direction. We think the market's overreacting to this a little bit. We're not worried. Yeah. I mean, the bottom line is this blip in CPI, which is mostly continued to be propped up by shelter costs, is not going to impede the Fed's ability to still hit their target, probably along the same time frame as what they were expecting, to where they get core PCE under 2%, um, which, by the way, if you look at the last 90 days or even the last six months, they're at that target. Um, just not in the year over year numbers. So I don't think by any means anything that happened now, right? Look, rates got worse, right? The 10 year jumped, mortgage backed securities jumped, interest rates got worse that day. That happened, right? But again, to Anton's point, you know, that's a blip in the radar. And what we're looking for is a long term trend of improving interest rates over time. And we're still moving in that direction. But what this blip and, and really what's happened since the end of December, all throughout January and now into February with rates kind of slowly creeping up. I mean, they have good days and bad days, but generally getting worse than they were on December 27th. What that has done, though, is it's created some opportunity. Let's Bingo. talk about the opportunity. So this is, this is the most important thing for listeners to get. Whenever the, the news comes out and it gives you that cycle and it says this is a problem, and then the stock market or the bond market or whatever responds really aggressively, what you need to do is you need to pause, calm down, get in your Zen space, lower the emotion and go, well, what's really happening here? What's really happening is long-term inflation is coming down and trending in the right direction. Cool, so this is a blip. Oh, if this is a blip, what that means now is that's opportunity. It means there may be less offers coming out me means a few buyers uh, didn't qualify. So for the buyer who's marginal and barely qualifying, maybe now I get them closing costs over the next week or two. Or maybe that home sits on the market a day longer and I could get them, you know, an actual inspection because the market's been on fire. Right. Also, let's flip it over. I mean, because we're investors, every little bump like this is a great opportunity for investors who are also thinking long term. That little blip caused maybe some buyers to stop or some sellers to hesitate, or then they wanted to sell quickly. As an investor, you're thinking long-term, boom, step in, buy it, get a good deal. Yeah. Every one of these always creates an opportunity. You just have to slow down and say, now, what's the total direction of, of where it's moving? Well, there's another opportunity, too, and you alluded to it before the call. And, and you know, I don't know that I'm seeing this in my salespeople, but... You know, there was a lot of exuberance, let's say, as we moved into 2024, a lot of excitement that the rates are getting better because they were right. I mean, they were at their best point at December 27th. I mean, that Christmas <laughs> to New Year's was a great week. We're all thinking it's game on. And now as we're rolling through, just like everybody's excitement around the first of the year, right, whether it be because of your 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 New Year's resolutions or your goals or whatever, some people are seeing what's happening with interest rates, whether they're in the real estate or the mortgage side of our business. And I think they're feeling all of a sudden they're, they're taking heat again. They're, 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 they're taking some shots. And what it's causing people to do 
is perhaps go, you know what? It's just another 2023. I, I had this momentum. I had all these plans and I'm going to chill out a little bit because uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm feeling the heat. You guys, I'm telling you right now, now is not the time to do that. The trend in 2024 is going to be your friend and it's going to be for lower interest rates overall. Do not let these little blips uh, derail your positive mental focus on what you want to accomplish in 24. But I'm telling you, and you were telling me, Anton, it is causing some people yes. to pull back. And as a result, the people that are out there pushing full steam ahead are taking an un, um, un, unreasonable amount of, of business, right? There, I'm watching this happen you know, because I pay attention to the market so much and, you know, I own two brokerages, so I get to see a lot of what happens. And I'm watching agents who are simply showing up, doing the activities, plugging in, are taking way more than their unfair share. And so that means that that's the same thing's happening to loan officers. Same thing's happening to title people. Same thing is happening. What's interesting, it's also happening in construction. In construction, too, you know, we got unsolicited calls over the last two weeks to say, hey, you got work for bids. But then there was this other group of our subs that are so busy, they, could, they couldn't even bid on something if they wanted to. And so I think what it is, is these people are, uh, they're like making their own market. They're making their own economy by how they feel. And that's kind of radiating outwards. So some people are just running with it. And others are going, you know what? I think it's going to suck again. I'm like, no, 2024 is going to be the best year in the last three years. Wait, are you are, are you saying that a person's mindset might have a direct correlation <laughs> to their success in the current market? Is that a possibility? I, I think your mindset always does. But I think when the whole U.S. has been under strife since COVID, right, that put emotional pressure on our friends, our family. Then we printed some money, everything felt okay. And then all of a sudden the economy started getting bad and tight and inflation, everything started getting expensive. So I think that external pressure and stress from COVID still hasn't fully left. And so you have to have more of a positive mindset than even normal because the whole US psych psychology mindset is trying to pull you down. So you, you've, gotta, you've just gotta power through. You know, we grew up in Arlington. It, did you, did you ever ride a, a dirt bike and, uh, you know, what do they say if, if you didn't think you were going to make it? Just throttle off. Throttle, throttle, <laughs> throttle through it, baby. Yeah, exactly. So just that's what this market is, man. It's just gas on. Just go. And, yeah, you might bump around. You might fall off the dirt bike. Just pick it back up and go for it again. Yeah, throttle through it. I, I, I like that. Well, I want to I wanna pivot a little bit, and I want to talk about what's going on you know, some stats, like what, what are we seeing as far as number of listings coming on the market? Are they moving quicker than they were? Are we seeing, is it, are they hitting early this year compared to what we've seen in years past? Maybe some of those stats I think would be helpful for the audience here. It, the spring market showed up early and the spring market showed up early this year, I believe for multiple reasons. One, we've actually had a warmer than normal winter, like 50, 60 degree. The frogs. I don't, I don't know about you guys. I live in a place where there's a lot of frogs. <laughs> and in January, we start hearing frogs. I'm like, this does not seem normal to me. But anyway. And if you own a season pass, you know, you were semi-disappointed this year. I got a picture from a friend sitting in the Mount Baker parking lot. And you can see the parking lot. You can, that's normally, you can't see the parking lot. Um, so the spring market showed up early because of actual weather. I thought, I think when rates got really low, all of us, because I know we were doing it, our whole network of friends, you know, investors, other agents, other lenders, we're all texting each other, bro, it's game on like Donkey Kong. So there was this exuberance also, so everyone was pushing really hard. And, and I believe some of these sellers started feeling it too. And then also because this is an election year, so there, are, there is a little bit of mentality of the seller right now, like, let's get it done early before uncertainty comes, because it doesn't matter what party you're in, when an, a presidential election comes in, the market generally slows down five to 10% in transactions because it just pauses around that. Right. So this is already from a week ago. Uh, on the MLS, there's a little thing called the market watch. 
And you can look at the seven-day uh, average for what's happening. And the NWMLS covers about 80% of Washington State. So for seven days, and this is single family, new listings, there was 1,203 new listings, which is up. But, or and, because this is, you know, this is a good thing. This is the market heating up. Pendings, there was 1,844. So even as inventory was rising, it was leaving the market faster than it was before. Here's what happened, not even anecdotally, to my own personal real estate that I was selling in December, because we had two new construction houses on the market, and then, of course, all of our listings. We sold everything from, like, right before Christmas Eve to, like, January 5th. I unloaded every single family listing, including my own bills during that time frame. The market is picking up steam, it's picking up heat. We also saw the, re so you saw days on market start to go down. Days on market is the, is the measure of how many days it takes for something to sell. You also saw bidding wars come back. So in the affordable price ranges and even up into the expensive price ranges, I was chatting with uh, some agents down there, Kirkland, Redmond, Bellevue. They were having bidding wars up into like the two sixes. So the whole market has reignited. It's cooling down slightly this week because of interest rates. But once again, don't let that emotionally derail you. Right. Yeah, that's our big message for today, I think, right, is that, you know, there's a trend. And Bingo. It, it started here, it, you know, at the end of December, December into January. We might have seen a little blip here with, with interest rates in the short term. But this is just showing you what this year I believe is going to look like as rates continue to uh, improve as the year goes on, you know? And so here's something I want you to be thinking about if you're a loan officer, a real estate agent, a real estate investor, is that the buyer thinks about this backwards. The buyer thinks when rates come down, I will buy and it will be cheaper and more affordable for me. Right. The problem is, is that rates come down, the number of buyers that qualify goes up and inventory cut itself in half. So January's inventory, we were below one month here in Snohomish County. For perspective, that's like walking into your favorite grocery store and there's like two cans of soup, you know, when there should be 300. So inventory is very low and as rates come down, that will just exasperate that. So for the buyer that says, I wanna wait until rates come down, you have to explain to them they're gonna experience not just more competition, but a double whammy. So here's the exact number. The average price in January, 2023 in Snohomish County was 694,000 and some change. In January of 2024, that number was 740,000 and some change. So if we compare just simply January of 23 to January of 24, the price is up 6.3% month on month. This is, you know, so when January starts with that much of an increase versus the previous January when rates were still low, you know you're setting us up for a, a minimum of 6% appreciation to maybe, now this is educated guesses. You can't take this to the bank. Oh, we're going to record this and we're going to play it if you're wrong. So yeah, don't worry about that. No, and to be honest, I'll, <laughs> anyone DM me, I'll make bets on this with you on the side. You're going to see 6 to 8% appreciation. Yeah. And if those rates come down further, it will just take that appreciation higher because there's not enough inventory coming to satisfy that demand. Let's flip it over. What's very interesting is on the rent side, rents are flat right now and slightly down. Right. So I spoke with a, uh, Joseph Fisher, Northwest Property Management. They manage about 750 units. Of course, I have my own units uh, here in the market too. And then out, outside the local markets, both south and north of here, uh, we had six units come up in November, December, and January. So six across that. Each one of them re-rented between one hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars less a month. Yeah, my 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 re-rented re for about three hundred dollars less. Also, it, but yours is a yours is a bigger, it's a nicer. Yeah, yeah, still <laughs> these are smaller. I know, but still, <laughs> I'm I'm talking like a part of a duplex. But but 
so all of us felt that. So I get this, I get a couple emails and a couple calls from investors that have been in my network for a long time. They said, Anton, what's happening? I said, whoa, whoa, slow down. We overbuilt the stacks. Okay, I call them the stacks. Those are those large multifamily boxes that are near the freeway, 60 unit, 100 unit, 500 unit complexes. We built the most multifamily we've built since the 80s, and it's all hitting right now. Yeah, you don't mean you as in you. You mean as as I'm an talking industry. the United States yeah, as a whole. Yeah, they've built a ton of apartments. And then, of course, here in the Seattle metro, we experienced the same thing. When rates shot up in 2022, excuse me, in 20, yeah, starting in 2022 and 2023, what that did was that cut off those development projects. Those development projects are usually on about a three-year cycle. So the stuff that's been hitting over the last year was already started back in 21 when money was so cheap. Got it. And so what's going to happen is now there's going to be a gap. So the gap started in 22. So you add three years, 25. So in 25 and 26, you're going to see a higher than normal rent bump because there's going to be a gap again. So investors hear what I just said. First time home buyers hear that. Go house hack that thing. Go buy that duplex. Go 1031 into something bigger because even if your cash flow goes down in 24, the numbers, the data is showing, it's most likely going to go up again and go up faster in 25 and 26 just due to well, lack of inventory. And if you're a first time home buyer or someone who's advising someone looking to buy a home and they're like, well, man, rents are getting lower. Maybe I should rent. It's like, we know that that's temporary because right now the market's just digesting all of the, the this this uh, these rentals that were started a couple of years ago, they're getting finished. They got to get filled up. There's a lot of competition for those renters right now until those are full, and 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 then there we're back to a lack of supply of of, of housing for the rental market, and we're going to see those things spike back up. So again, you can't make your decisions based on whether or not I'm going to own a home for the next ten years based on the fact that we have maybe. Uh, 18 to 36 month window here where rents might be a little soft because we know they're going to go up. So whether you're on the investor side of that equation or you're on the, the 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 home buyer side of that equation, I think you know just know know the facts and, and what Anton's saying, and don't let the fact that rents coming down either keep you from being an investor or make you think that renting is somehow better than buying because we just talked about what we think appreciation is going to be this year. You factor that. I mean, you're not going to, what's the rate of appreciation on a rental on, on, on when you pay rent? I Negative. Forget. Oh, it's, that's right. That's right. There is no appreciation when you pay rent. So, you know, maybe it's six, six to 8% as Anton predicted. Um, you know, maybe it's 3%. Look, it's more than zero is the bottom line. We know that it's going to be uh, positive. And as we see rates come down, and we see competition heat up for uh, purchasing homes. We know there's pent up demand. I mean, God's sake, look look at how many people couldn't buy because of the higher interest rates. You know, so not only do more people come out of the woodwork when interest rates are lower, we have a backlog of people who would have oh, yes. probably purchased but couldn't because rates were high. You guys, I think it's going to be a feverish second half of 2024 and into 25 and probably 26. And you you couple on top of that. Just the actual demographics, you know, the age of those the, those millennials, the number of people coming through the cycle, man, it is. Uh, there is an when you add all that up, Anton, it's it's almost scary. What the opportunity is right now, Bingo. before that craziness happens. So I went uh, this morning. I was in the largest developer in the county's office, and I said, "Are you a buyer? Are you a seller? What are you doing?" He said, I'm a seller for the right price, and I'm going to be stingy on those numbers, and I'll buy anything that makes sense. So one of the biggest buyers in the county said it's game on like Donkey Kong. So if big money is moving, cool. Everyone else should be doing the same thing. I want to give, I want to give the listeners another way to think about this too. So generally speaking, when we're in the data, and throughout the Seattle metro, and this happens actually for most markets, but it's very true here. I've been looking at this data since 2004. So I've been looking at it for 20 years. All of the appreciation happens generally by June. So as that spring market comes through, usually it's 
appreciation right till about the end of spring. And then the market just goes flat and then even slightly down there at, uh, at the end of the year during winter. It kind of makes sense. We live in a wet climate. The sun comes out. More people want to buy homes. So when the buyer or the investor says, I want to wait for rates to come down, well, what you're actually saying is if I wait for the sunshine to come out and for it to be June, I want to pay 6% more on that $700,000 house. So I'd actually like to spend 42 grand more to buy that home in June instead of just buying it now. Right. And, and even if rates today are seven, but in June they were six and a half, it's not going to compensate for that 42 grand. No. And it's 42 grand you could have made between now and June by owning that home today. And there's, there's no guarantee that number's going to happen, but these numbers are pretty consistent. Yeah, it's the concept too, right? I mean, look, we're not, you know, it, it's, it's the concept. It's thinking about real estate from the investment side of it and really applying logic to the, the situation that's, that's going on, I think, in the, in the marketplace and being able to see the big picture. I mean, another investor asked me something that I really want to share is they said, what what would you say would be the sexiest thing in 2024? And so they're thinking returns when they say that. And I said, I know this sounds silly, and, and I've never said this, but single-family homes are probably going to be some of your best returns in 2024 that'll even beat your traditional duplexes, your sixplexes, and it's definitely going to beat large multifamily. Yeah. And it's, pr it's probably going to beat industrial. We know it's going to beat office. <laughs> I mean, because office is well, so big. Yeah, that's a whole other story. <laughs> and so you look at it and you go, wow, single family homes may be one of the best uh, asset performing classes in real estate in 2024. So what should you do? House hack, build a home, flip a home, find something here in Everett and build a dadu in the backyard. It's just there's a lot of opportunity on the supply creation dis, uh, side because there's so much demand. The parts I'm still weary of, scared of, large office, yep, large multifamily. That large office and the large multifamily has to work through its problems that was created by syndication and the time frames that they were purchased in. That, that's the only part of the market that worries me. But guess what? That doesn't affect the average investor. It doesn't affect the average home buyer. So when they hear these things about um, commercial real estate or the banking crisis 2.0, that's never going to hit the average consumer. Right, right. But but I would say that if rents continue to soften as we think that yep. they're going to, that you know you take the the pressures that the that the regional banks who I think do a lot of these commercial loans for for larger multifamily, medium to large multifamily. It's going to be kind of the same issue as we're seeing with the office buildings. Rents are down, right? Qualifying for those mortgages, the higher interest rates on those mortgages. There's, there, I think you're right. I think there's some pain in the large multifamily space, potentially. And then you just flip it over, and that pain is also opportunity. For somebody. So generally speaking, the larger multifamily, they've got 35% down on it and 65% debt. So... Let's just pretend 35% went away. Well, if 35% away, the investors or the LPs lost their money, but the bank still made whole. So I'm actually not as worried about the bank. Right. It's the investors that got into syndications and things like that with operators who are not used to doing this or haven't navigated these types of markets. Now, conversely, there's going to be some deals to be had. Absolutely. Well, all right. We're getting close to the end of this podcast. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about today that we didn't get to yet that you think would be? I, the only thing that I, I want to go into is, lastly would be that um, home sales. So as rates come down, realize the market naturally does more transactions. And so as a real estate agent, as a lender, your business, because it's a tide, it lifts a boat. You should naturally do 15% more deals. Now, if you're going to not do 
15% more deals this year, it actually means that mindset part of the equation, you're missing and you're not plugging in. And you're not going into the office and you're not doing the fundamentals. That's item one. Item two is that because of how land development and new construction works, we mentioned it in multifamily, but understand that applies to single family and townhomes also. So we are headed for a supply crunch again in 25 and in 26 because of the same development issues that you're seeing right now, which will continue to force price appreciation throughout the Seattle Metro. There is nothing coming to fix that number. Even when you go and look at our foreclosure rate, the foreclosure rate has risen, but it's like 0.4. Yeah, it's nothing. It's It hasn't risen enough to create enough inventory to be there. And this isn't 2008 because they have equity. They can sell it. And in 2008, the mortgage was toxic because the payment was rising because and they didn't actually qualify. Today, the debt isn't actually an asset, even if they are losing their job, because their debt at 3% is probably cheaper than renting. So there's this weird dynamic that's not going to bring this inventory. So anything that you can do to create inventory or put yourself in the, in the opportunity to create inventory or housing over the long term here in the metro is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. I want to circle back to your first point. Let me make sure that I understood this right. What what you're saying essentially is that the market is going to be better in 2024 than it was in 2023. Yes, correct. A rising tide lifts all boats. The only thing that's going to keep you from taking that ride with the rest of the boats is having your boat out of the water, okay? So the message to mortgage and real estate professionals is be engaged, be in the game, do the fundamentals, do the things that you know you're going, that you need to be doing as a, as a professional in these industries. And if you do that, if nothing else, you should at least get the same, you know, 12, 15% gain in business that the rest of the industry is going to realize. If you do them really well and you do them at the very top of the game, you could expect to really rise above the rest of the competition. There will be people who will double their business in 2024 because they just don't know any better. Yeah. There's an agent I've been watching on social media out of Kirkland, and this woman has done in like five months a couple hundred open houses. Killing it. Just going above and beyond. And I'm not saying like that's the level you have to go to, but that individual is going to get way more than their unfair share in this market. So every market has lots of opportunity. You need to go find your opportunity. I think you need to start with this and believe the opportunity is there and that you can do it first. Yeah, I love it. Well, you guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch Market Shares. And I hope that part of what you get out of this, you know, we we try to cover a, a myriad of topics on Market Shares. But once in a while, you just need to plug in and hear that the excitement and momentum that we came into 2024 with is not gone. Matter of fact, what you got from Anton and I today is we're super optimistic and any little blips in that process, in our opinion, is really just creating opportunity. So take that, embody that mindset, share it with your clients, share it with your realtors. If you're a loan officer and you work with realtors and they're kind of down and out, get them excited about the market and realtors, vice versa. Get your lending partners excited about what's going on and go into this, get your boats in the water, get out there doing the things. This market will lift us all as time goes on. I have no doubt about that. So with that, you guys, that's our message for today. Anton, thanks for coming down and giving us another dose of, you know, the real estate perspective, uh, because, you know, it's important that we hear it all. For those of you that are watching, please like and subscribe to Market Shares. It definitely helps us show up more often, Um, but also let people know about this. If someone needs to hear this message, you know, send them a link to the YouTube video or just tell them to check us out. Uh, one of these days. We would appreciate that referral. And until next time, take care.